Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to take a look at the second of the Fierce Force figures, the newest wave of Fierce Force, from Mattel for the Jurassic World Dino Escape line, and as you can see, today we are taking a look at the second variant of the Mashikasaurus. This figure has been released once before, so it is cool to have a second version. The funny thing is, this version was actually unveiled on us before the first version was ever released, so they were already planning a second version before this one had ever even hit stores or before the original one had ever hit stores but as far as what we have here box art wise it's your standard as always when it comes to the dino escape line and here on the back you can kind of see a sneak peek of the action feature as well as the other figures that are in this wave of fierce force so let's go ahead pop this open and take a look at it so we have reviewed this figure in the past as far as the sculpt goes. This is the second release now of this particular figure. So we don't need to go over the sculpt again. We've already done that in the first review. What we really need to go over is anything that's new with this figure in comparison to the initial release. And that would be the color scheme because action feature wise and everything else, it's the exact same figure. So as far as the coloration goes, we have kind of a very dark, almost like a maroonish color for the overall body color of our Mushikasaurus, but you can see that up here on the face we do have the eyes painted with kind of like a green it's like a light green and a slit like pupil with a black pupil so that is a huge plus i love when they include the black pupils because they don't always do that so it is nice to see that they have done it with the last few releases i think actually that i've reviewed as far as mattel figures go the teeth are painted. They're painted with an off-white. We do, of course, have an articulated jaw, so we can see on the inside of the mouth we have a very nice realistic tone of color with a variation of pink for both the tongue and the rest of the inside of the mouth except for the upper side of the jaw. But we also have a very nice gloss coat in here, which we can see. Pretty nicely textured tongue as well, so it definitely looks very, very nice as far as that goes. And the teeth look pretty good for the most part everywhere. You know, they, of course, are those, like, big bulky teeth that you usually find on dinosaurs like this. Pretty much anything Mattel will usually have these kind of big bulkier teeth, of course, because you don't want kids to get hurt with the figures or anything like that. But they are painted fairly nicely. They don't really appear to be sloppy or anything like that. And actually, the eyes are both placed pretty good as well, so that is definitely a plus. You can start to see some speckling on this one as we have kind of like a light yellowish speckling, I think, for the majority of the figure. Although the speckling isn't as abundant as I've seen on plenty of other Mattel figures in the past. We also have kind of a, like, eh, it's like a yellowish green kind of a color. It's a weird tone of color here for the lower jaw. But you can see that that doesn't run down into the neck or the throat or anything like that. It's just the jaw. It does pick back up. It Actually, it's a different shade, but we do have alternate coloration here on the underside. Here on just the stomach and leading back into like the pelvic region of the Mashikasaurus, we do have an alternate tone of color, but it's a very dark kind of a yellowish orange. And it looks really cool. I actually love that tone of color, but I would have loved it a lot more if it had run the course of the entire underside out onto the tail up here in the throat and everything. It would have looked much nicer that way. There is the Jurassic Facts app code. Since we are down here, might as well show it now. But other than that, as you come up here, you start to see here about halfway down the neck, we pick up a very, very abundant kind of a speckling and designing all throughout with a yellowish coloration. And you see it picks up again here and runs out throughout the course of the back like it is super abundant. And you can see how it just kind of meshes with the maroonish color and then the yellowish coloration. And they just kind of transition back and forth all over the place and design everywhere. And you can see it runs out onto the tail, but it does stop abruptly as per usual. And then we lead out the rest of the tail with no coloration other than the maroon color of the body. We do have a little bit of this running down into the thigh, but that's really about it. I would have, again, loved to have seen maybe a little bit more up here or at the very least have the paint run out all the way onto the tail. Like since they don't really have much going on here in the face, we could have made up for that by having more paint run out onto the tail as far as like this, you know, splotching and designing yellowish coloration but they chose not to do that we can see that the other side of course looks pretty much exactly the same there's no real big differences or anything which is good means the paint is definitely consistent we do not have painted nails but i honestly don't even know that i actually ever need to mention that anymore because it's a very rare occasion when we do have painted nails from mattel so very cool looking unfortunately not too much color going on or anything to you know, different compared to the original one. Of course, the coloration is very different, but the sculpt itself is the same. 
but again a pretty fun looking fairly flashy version of the Mashikasaurus. As far as articulation goes, it's the same as the first time. If you happen to have missed out on the first figure, then of course we'll show you what we have going on. But we have the articulated jaw. It's a little stiff. Not too bad, though. We also have articulation in the neck, and we have it in two areas. One here and one at the base of the neck. So you can see it extends the head very nicely, very smoothly, and very realistically. And that's also part of the action feature. We have articulation in the arms, which that's actually very smooth. Forward and back, of course, and out away from the body which is very nice articulation there. We have articulation in the legs, also incredibly, incredibly smooth, almost worrisomely smooth. Not really anything out away from the body, but it does move forward and back. And then we have a swivel tail for the dinosaur as well, but that is actually really stiff. So some stiff joints, some very, very smooth joints. As far as the action feature goes, you'd probably want the mouth open because it's going to be a snapping, well, not really snapping, but a lunging action feature where you want the mouth to be open so it can bite at whatever, again, it's attacking or it can just dance here and headbang and all of that. But, you know, it's kind of, I guess, what you would expect as far as an action feature goes for this particular species. As far as a size for a length, you are looking at about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And for a height, about the three and a quarter inch range or around eight and a half centimeters, somewhere around there. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line in comparison to our brand new Fierce Force Mushikasaurus. And you can see that, as per usual, when it comes to this size range figure, it fits right in the same size as pretty much all of the previously released Fierce Force or Savage Strike style figures goes and no real big difference or anything as far as the size in comparison to previous releases. And then for a second comparison here is the initial Mashikasaurus in comparison to the newest version. So as you can see, similar actually as far as like they have the lower jaw coloration that's an alternate shade of color, almost the same tone of color, and then no real coloration to the underside of the dinosaur I don't know if the original one has it. No, the other original one didn't have anything on the underneath. At least the newer one does have a little bit under there. But you can see that as far as the actual tones and the overall design go, they're very different. The original one was mostly just greens, and the newer one has a much flashier look to it, I would say. So maybe a male and female here when it comes to these two figures. So this brand new Fierce Force Mushikasaurus from Mattel for the Jurassic World Dino Escape line is another fun release and might actually be a little bit nicer than the original one, the initial one. Although I do like the initial one, I feel like just because this one has a little bit of a flashier coloration and a little extra color on the underside, it definitely looks, you know, a little bit nicer, but... The only plus side to the original one in comparison to this one is the original one had a little bit more alternate paint run out further onto the tail. Not by much, but it did have a little bit of a further reach, I think, into the tail than what we have on this one. But this one just generally has a much flashier look as far as the coloration goes. Obviously, very different tones of color compared to the original one. And this one does also have a black pupil, which I don't think the original one did. So, again, another upside to this one over the original but the coloration of this one looks really nice. Again, the tones of color used play off of each other beautifully with the lighter kind of spotting and designing all over the place compared to the darker body color as far as the overall body color of the dinosaur. I feel like, again, we could have improved the figure with a little bit more paint out onto the tail, some painted nails, and even coloration there on the underside coming from the lower jaw as opposed to just having a random alternate color for the lower jaw. At least have it run a little bit, even down into the throat like they've done a few times. But it just kind of looks a little out of place when they don't do that. But again, the coloration looks nice for what it is. It just could have been better. The sculpt, of course, is fantastic as far as the Mattel figure goes. It is extremely highly detailed, pretty nicely replicating a Mushikasaurus. Not exactly. Again, it's not the most accurate version of one, but it looks pretty cool as far as what you would get from Mattel. And again, the detailing is very nice, very vibrant throughout the entire course of the figure. So always a huge plus as far as that goes. And then you have some pretty fun articulation, no different from the previous release, but still pretty decent articulation on top of everything and kind of a cool action feature. Not the best that Mattel has offered, but still all right. So another fun release from Mattel, nothing groundbreaking, nothing amazing, but definitely a fun alternate version of the Mashikasaurus. And I am really quite happy to now have 
two paint variants of this figure in the line. So if you are interested in this, you can possibly check the description as I will include a link to where it is available on Target.com. From time to time, it kind of goes in and out of stock. So you might be able to get a hold of it there. So you can check, of course, Target.com. Or you can probably find it in store, if not now, but soon maybe, hopefully, if it becomes more abundant at some point. The Mattel stuff's kind of like almost non-existent in most stores right now due to the holiday season. But hopefully it'll pick up a little bit soon and maybe not be so in demand and you'll be able to have an opportunity to buy one in store. But regardless, again, very cool figure. Make sure you pick it up if you can, in fact, find it. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.